This video brought to you in part by Tommy in the Order of Cosmic Champions. This exciting and heartwarming coming of age Gen X novel is available now. Check the link for more info. Last week, I reviewed this At Games Atari 50th Anniversary Flashback Gold Unit. I enjoyed playing with it. It was far from perfect, but overall, I did have a fun time with it. But the one thing that it was obviously lacking, that most hobbyists like you and I probably would like to have, is any kind of SD slot or obvious method of expansion. You can't just add your own games easily into this, but it is possible. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to get that done. Hey there, welcome back to Gen X Grown Up. I am John and I am a Gen X Grown Up. And the process to accomplish this is really quite simple, but it does have a few steps. Now there's no magic here. There's nothing I'm doing that you couldn't do your own research and reading and figure out how to do yourself. But in this video, I hope to kind of streamline it and make the process more obvious so you know what software and hardware you're gonna need to get this done. And spoiler alert, it's pretty cheap. You need a part that costs about $3 and you need a USB memory stick. And by the way, the stick itself needs to be a good stick. What do I mean by a good stick? Well, one that works. I tried this process with an old flip stick and it didn't work at all. I couldn't even flash the firmware. So I did have this one. And the other part I'm gonna talk about is an on-the-go cable. I will have a link down in the description of this video. You can go right to Amazon and get the very one that I used. It costs like five or six bucks for two of them. You can't buy just one, uh, but give one to a friend. You'll probably find a use for it in the future. Let's start with what to do software-wise with this USB memory stick. Now, before we start monkeying with the USB stick itself, we need to go grab some software, and we can grab it all from atariage.com. In the description of this video are links to the two threads that have software downloads included. The first is on this page, thanks to Brad from the 80s. Just scroll down and look for a little box to download, click, and that'll download pretty fast. It's not very large at all, and we'll get to that in a second. The next file you want is at the second link, also in the description, and this is by a user called Draxon. He's created this bundle called Atari. It's an acronym for how to in injecting images and everything. whatever. Just look, you'll see, scroll down on this thread, you'll see a link, click on that link. It'll take a minute or so to download because it's a little bit larger than the previous one. Put both of those in a folder where you can find them, and now let's get after that USB memory stick. First, I'm just gonna plug this into the computer and right-click on it to format it. Now, make sure you format it as FAT32, which should be the default probably if you're using Windows. Uh, and while this is a 32 gig stick, I just formatted it to four gig, and that's more than enough space than you'll ever need for Atari images. Once your stick is formatted, we need to extract the three files from the AFB50 zip archive. Just take all three of them, drag them right into the root of this memory stick. Now pull the stick out of your computer and let's head back to the flashback and plug it in. So you've got your good USB memory stick, but nowhere to plug it in on the back of the unit. There's just this one micro USB port. Well, that's where this comes into play. This is called an OTG cable, or on the go. And what it has is a micro USB in and out here and a USB A here. And what we'll do is we will plug the micro USB in to the flashback. We'll plug the power into the input on the OTG cable, and we can plug our memory stick into the USB A port. And in this way, we can have both power and data coming in through that single port. Okay, power it on. Now, once it boots up, it's gonna ask you, hey, do you wanna update this firmware left or right? You just grab your stick, plug it into port one, and tilt left. It's then gonna restart, and you will see this installing system update screen. This will take just a couple of minutes, and it will reboot again. Now, the second time it asks, do you wanna update the firmware? We obviously don't, but we do need to do the second step, which is run that startup script that will dump all the contents onto the USB stick. So in this case, we just tap right. Startup this time will probably take a little bit longer than usual because it's actually copying the files from the unit to your USB stick. Now, that can take some time. And in fact, there are some times you'll find where it looks like the USB stick is done writing. Uh, even if it, like mine has a little blinking light, it's still working, it's still doing something. People have even suggested like, just go play a game, just play anything. Like jump into a game, play a little bit, some people have said, depending on the speed of your USB stick, maybe like wait as much as five or 10 minutes. In my experience, that's not necessary as long as your uh, memory stick is sufficiently new. Uh, yeah, so that is probably enough. So I've completed it. So now I am going to quit out of this, turn off the unit and take that memory stick back to the computer. 
And this is what you should see in the root. You'll see this emulation, this ROM folder, uh, a few other things, and you will see these three original files that we threw in there. Now, we don't want the flashback to ever try to do those first two steps ever again, so we delete these two files, the Atari update image, that'll keep it from trying to flash the firmware, and the startup.sh file, that will keep it from trying to dump the contents of the flashback onto the memory stick. Now, while we're here, let's bring in our own Atari games and put them on the USB memory stick. We need to make a new folder and call it GAME, game, all lowercase, open up that folder, and into it we are going to drag our Atari ROM images. Now, just a couple of caveats here. They must have the file extension .a26, and they must have no spaces. The flashback will see those files, but it will not play them because the parser just is not looking for dealing with spaces. Just take the spaces out. You can do it manually, or you can use a tool like Advanced Renamer. Uh, if ever you have a ROM image that doesn't boot, odds are you probably forgot to take a space out. It happened to me a couple of times. So once you have all of your ROM images in there, again, take the memory stick out of your computer and back into the flashback and power it up. Okay, something new now that we restarted. Look down here, external USB drive. So we can now navigate there and guess what's in there? There are the ROMs that we copied into that game folder. And they're all the ones that, you know, I just threw in the ones that were a particular omission or that were problems. The first, how about a regular Space Invaders? <laughs> That's the Space Invaders we wanted on this unit, right? Ah, that's what I'm talking about. There's the one we wanted. And not for nothing, but guess what? Save slots still work just fine. Save slot, you want to rewind? No problem. All that still works. Were you sad that Frogger wasn't here? The Parker Brothers Frogger? Be sad no longer because here it is. How about some Battle Zone? Pac-Man? <laughs> or Miss Pac-Man? Or even some E.T. the Extraterrestrial. Now at this point, we could be finished. And if you're satisfied with what you have so far, that's cool. But if you'd like to put in a little bit of extra work for a huge reward and payoff, stick around for this next part of the video. If you'd rather skip it, use those chapter marks in the video to fast forward to the part of the video called summary and we'll finish up. Hey, you stuck around. I knew you weren't afraid of a little hard work when it means you're gonna play some more Atari games. All right, so back to the computer. We're gonna plug that USB memory stick in. And now we're gonna work with that second file that we downloaded. Now this one is a RAR archive. If you don't have a tool for it, go get like 7-Zip or WinRAR, the free versions of those that will allow you to open up this archive. There are really just two more steps here, but they take a little bit of time. First, we're gonna take the default ROM folder that exists on the USB stick. That's the one that was dumped by the flashback of its own internal contents and just rename it to something like ROM-old or whatever. I mean, you could delete it, but renaming it is just as good and that way you're not ever losing any material. And then what you're gonna do is open up that RAR archive. Dig into it until you find the ROM folder inside of it. Drag that ROM folder up into the root of the USB memory stick. Now this has hundreds and hundreds of files on there, so it'll take a few minutes. But when you're done, what you're then gonna have in the root of the USB is gonna look like this. You'll still have that game folder, you'll have that ROM old folder, and then you'll have this new ROM folder that contains hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of Atari games. You're gonna be surprised just what is in there when you see. So let's take it back, plug it into the flashback one more time, and power it up. Now this time you may have to wait a while, Longer than you think, even longer, because it's reading hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of titles off of the USB memory stick. So be patient. If you have a blinking light on your USB stick, that might help you know how long. You're gonna think it's too long. Don't give up. It will come on. It is getting there. And there it is, just as I promised. Now again, these aren't mutually exclusive. I still have the ROMs that I put on there. I can still come down and go to those if I want. Yeah, they're all still there, but replacing the ROMs folder from Atari Age with the ROMs folder that came from the Flashback Gold has given us, so I, look, I can't play every game or even half of these games. I'm gonna flip through these and show you the kind of volume that's here. All the, all the omissions, look, I just saw Berserk go by. I know there's like five versions of Pac-Man. There's like five versions of Donkey Kong. This is not just Atari and Activision, but it's like 20th Century Fox and Parker Brothers and Magic, uh, Star Path, 
Telegames, US Games, Coleco, even like those Zonox double headers are in here, plus like homebrews and ROM hacks, and just it goes on and on and on and on. I mean, halfway through. Let me speed up. I'm P, Q, R, S. Look at all this. There is so much here that you are going to have a good time with. Just a couple of really quick examples though. Yeah, Pac-Man is here, but you want to play like that Pac-Man 4K that's ridiculously good? It's here too. Look at that. Wouldn't you have killed to have this version of Pac-Man? And look, it's not like the Space Invaders. It's not like, oh, this is not really Atari game. This is running on Atari hardware using that emulator. This absolutely is an Atari game, just a recent version of an Atari game that's now available for us to play on our flashback. Same idea with Donkey Kong. Look, here's the Coleco Donkey Kong that we all played. We know it. And there's other versions that have come out later that other people have written. Look at this ridiculous thing. And by ridiculous, I mean ridiculously cool that someone was able to do this with an Atari. <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> it's all the stuff we wish we'd had. Look at the physics on Mario. This is just crazy. Look, I don't think I need to demo any more of these. I'm gonna leave you to discover all of these cool titles that probably many of them you've never seen before. This is more than just nostalgia. This is exploring the current state of Atari development in addition to all your favorites. Now, if you've been watching this video straight through, this next part is not for you. This is for the people that skipped ahead to the end because they were afraid of the extra work that was in that more advanced section. You ready? Five, four, three. Come on, I have faith in you. Don't skip out on that second part. Go back to the more advanced section and do it. It's just two extra steps. It takes a little bit of time, a little more moving files around, but in the end, you're gonna be glad you did. Believe me, you can do it. Okay, so we're all back together. Here's the summary. The next time you turn on your Atari Flashback Gold, you're gonna have all of your own ROMs, or you're gonna have all of your own ROMs, plus hundreds of other things from Activision and US Games and Parker Brothers and Xanox and who knows. I don't know if you went both steps or just the first one. That's not how videos work, I can't tell. I hope you did both. You're gonna be glad that you did. Two more things to remind you of before we leave. In the description of this video, links to all the sites where I downloaded the software we used in this video, as well as a link to Amazon, where you can click and download the OTG cable that I used. And if you click on that one and buy it, I'll get like three cents, which is that much closer to my dreams of world domination. So there's that. The second thing to remind you of is if you power up the flashback gold now with just the power cable and not the USB memory stick, it will work exactly the way it used to. This is entirely non-destructive. So you really don't have anything to lose. Hey, I'll throw some links here and there over my shoulders to some other Atari coverage that we've done here on Gen X Grown Up. I certainly hope you found something to enjoy in this video and I can't wait to talk to you next time. Bye-bye.